Okay, this is the neck. Trying to get a nice close up shot so you can see the actual machining of the neck. It's really clean, and there isn't going to be a lot of sanding that I'll need to do. You can see how it ended up there. That's my center line I remarked, and where my nut slot's going to end up, those two marks there. And we'll just go to the heel. It's slightly over an inch, as you can see by my upper mark above the uh, exit hole or the nut hole there. If I can get it in here, you can see just how straight that is. I think uh, this jig is a keeper actually. What I plan on doing is working with, uh, I'm going to try anyways, I have this piece of um, hard rubber for sanding and I'm going to make a block system to use in the jig itself. And uh, what I'll probably do is have it run underneath just on top of the neck and I can use that back and forth to final sand it using the jig itself to make sure I keep my contour here and um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, right now I've got just a little bit of material at the uh, plug hole there as you can see about a sixteenth obviously the relationship of the nut to the bridge is critical and you're not going to want to uh, go too close in here you can adjust it by sanding back because as that de as that angle drops down you're going to gain more material but then your nuts going to have to be pushed back which will affect the placement of your bridge and it'll throw off your geometry bit there and you probably will run out of room if you use an original location for the bridge as far as intonation goes um, I'm really close there where I am here is probably as far as I want to go I believe that the uh, eighth inch slot for the nut, uh, where it is there, I need another eighth in front of that where the uh, that this transition begins. So I have a little bit of room to play with. I could drop down the neck, the thickness a little bit if I want, but we'll just see how that goes. I'll do some finish sanding on that. Here you can sort of see the slight tool marks there. Um, you really, I can't feel it it actually is pretty uh, smooth so it's not going to take much finish sanding whatsoever and the other thing I want to bring to your attention is this nice sharp edge at the uh, base side and treble side of the neck here you're going to want to uh, do as much as you can not to sand a nice round edge there you want to leave that as sharp as possible so when you do your fret work it, your fret ends are going to be nicely tight down at your fingerboard at this at these edges here. Uh, the tendency is to is to sand it and then kind of give it a nice hit it with a bit of a round just for feel wise prior to fretting and then you'll find out that hey I shouldn't have done that and then you'll have to figure out what to do there. It just makes the job a lot easier if you don't touch that at all and keep that nice and sharp. I know when you get to this stage you want to know what it feels like when you hold it in your hand it feels really good already. I um, sort of went ahead and did the transition sanding uh, yesterday. I know I was going to show it, but I'll show it on my other neck when I uh, get to it. I'm just waiting for the uh, the bullet nut to do the tr to fit in my truss rod. So it's slightly uh, slightly complete. It's nice and smooth, and uh, there's a bit of a knock there. I dropped it, and I just have to fix that up. Not a big deal. I'll probably round that, uh, you can really see the definite shoulder here, I'll probably round that a little bit more, get that a little uh, smoother. That line there is where my side marker dots will go, that's at 7 eighths from the bottom up. I think there's a variation of 7 eighths to 13 sixteenths there. Um, don't know what else I can say about it. Um, yeah, from here, once it's sanded, I'll install the fret markers and the face and the side. I'll finish up the face. I'll do the the plug in a later stage just in case I need to have to pull out the truss rod or if there's a problem there I know I can get it out without too much trouble. It's just a matter of popping her out and sliding her back in. They're installed. I install the truss rods 
through the headstock and then when I get the head the truss rod in I'll take a punch a small punch about a uh, quarter inch punch and I'll tap that anchor so that it's biting the teeth are biting into the bottom of the plug hole and then I'll uh, install the nut that's how that's uh, that's how I install the uh, truss rod anyways um, pretty slick little design I think um, I know most guys stick with a standard straight uh, nine and a half or seven and a half or twelve inch radius all the way down parallel with the jig that uh, you just have a, a carriage for the router and just kind of go back and forth with it but I thought I'd try something a little more elaborate from my first time out and uh, I think it turned out pretty good See if I can get any more good shots of this so the proof will be in when we start fretting and doing the fret leveling just to see how good that straight uh, surface is and uh, hopefully you're enjoying it I've been getting some good responses and getting uh, some questions hopefully I can answer them all I'm uh, fairly new at this myself but I think I've got some good ideas that help the processes along the way make it a little simpler and a little more consistent and uh, it's been fun anyways um, I think the next stage you'll see will be the uh, position markers and the side markers once I uh, get to doing the body I'll bother I'll do the uh, inserts I'm going to be using inserts for these next now you see this blue tape with two washers I needed that to bring my uh, heel end and my nut end perfectly parallel to the base for the router so that I wasn't creating a, a back ramp or, or having any kind of a ramping in the neck actually the nice thing is with this jig is I can introduce a little bit of a rake to the neck if I wanted to um, that way I wouldn't have to shim the heel like a lot of guys talk about I just put it into the neck itself and be done with it um, I haven't tried it whether it would make a big difference I don't know here is a shot with a straight edge across the center of the fingerboard seems pretty good check the edge sometimes it changes one thing I forgot to men mention that I'll mention now is when you're routing the uh, the top of the neck here and you're coming to the edge of your fingerboard you want the rotation of the bit as it's facing down you want it to be cutting into your material not this way if you're when you're coming in this direction you want it to be going into the wood or else you'll get chips coming out here so when I'm running it across my jig um, and I'm coming to the end I want to make sure that I'm coming from right to left clockwise and when I'm up here I'm going left to right clockwise obviously because the bit's still going the same direction and I'm cutting into the wood um, I haven't decided I mean I suppose when I started doing the cutting on this neck I was starting from the center going out and then I tried going from the bottom across and from the top down and I don't think it really matters I think it, the most critical aspect would be when you're coming to your edge that you don't get chipping especially when you're near the finish passes that you're going to be doing and obviously uh, if you're trying to take out a lot of material I had to take out a good almost 3 sixteenths out of this neck I didn't have to be real uh, precise with my passes until I got near the end I was doing I think I did over 30 passes on this last last run uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind that I didn't mention in the earlier uh, part of this video is that you want to make sure you don't get any chipping here so the rotation goes into the into the material okay
I think that's all the suggestions and advice I can give on doing this neck. And we'll see you later.